The Samsung Galaxy A6s that recently launched in China is not a Samsung phone. Wait, what? Yep. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's see what's going on here with that A6s. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications. Go ahead, click that bell icon. And as always, here's a card to our monthly giveaway. Check it out if you haven't yet. Now, before we start discussing what's going on, let me take you through a quick hardware rundown of the A6s. To the front, there's a 6 inch 1080p AMOLED panel. Interestingly, this one is standard 18 by 9 and not the 18.59 Infinity that Samsung generally uses for their phones. Inside, we have a Snapdragon 660 chip, there's 6 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs or 128 gigs of onboard storage. To the back, we have dual 12 plus 12 megapixel cameras and an oval shaped fingerprint sensor. Below that, there's Samsung branding. Now, Samsung neither fully designed nor manufactured this phone. That was Wing Tech, an ODM. That begs the question, what is an ODM? Well, ODM stands for Original Design Manufacturer. They create phones that get resold by different brands. Now, the famous, a very famous example, a popular example for an ODM is, wait for it, HTC. They started off as an ODM developing phones for other brands who would just slap their stickers on it or rather branding on it. But then they realized, hey, we could sell and make more money as a brand ourselves. And then they became a full-fledged brand. Another example, a more recent, more common example is Geony. Brands in the US like Blue and other places like Allview, they've all been brands that kind of use Geony phones in other countries with their own branding. Of course, in India, Geony quick, quickly realized that using their own phones under their own branding was more profitable. Hence, Geony was a brand for India. They did sell their phones directly in India. Though it is not relevant to this video, I also want to take this time to mention ODM and OEM are different. OEM is an original equipment manufacturer, for example, Foxconn for Apple. Here, Apple provides the specs and directions on exactly what Foxconn needs to do. And Foxconn just gets it done. They just do the implementation part. So the OEM doesn't design, they just follow instructions, whereas an ODM handles the design aspect too. They are in control. So does this make Samsung the next Micromax now? Are they like Micromax? Does this mean we are going to see the A6s from a different brand under a different name? Probably not. Now, using an ODM doesn't mean you have to be a Micromax. The ODM can come up with an exclusive design only for that brand and work with the brand for something. For example, Xiaomi sources a lot of work to, I mean, on the Redmi series to ODMs. Guess which one? Yep, it's the same wing tech that Samsung is using now. The cheapest of phones, the lowest tier option is what a brand like Micromax would use. Basically, they wouldn't even, Micromax wouldn't even work with the ODM. They'll just go to China, find an ODM and ask, hey, what models do you have? Show me them. Oh, cool. This one looks nice. Uh, we can say we worked on this feature for four, six, 12 months. Yeah, let's say it's ours. And of course, put a bro fest on it. And wait, 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 we need a made in India stamp. Let's put that, let's put that and we'll send it to India, we'll manufacture the boxes in India or probably import the boxes from China too. But then we will assemble everything and put them into the box there and call it made in India. Hey! Now this is why the quality control is usually bad on those phones and there are a multitude of issues. But for a brand like Xiaomi or Samsung, they would work with the ODM closely and make sure that they get a phone that's exclusive to them. Which is why all Redmi's kind of look similar, though some of them are manufactured using ODMs. And the A6s doesn't have an 18.5 by 9 or something, but it still looks quite Samsung-ish. Uh, and of course, the better the ODM used, the better the quality control. So all of this leads us to one big question. Why does Samsung have to do this? Aren't they big, huge? Aren't they a behemoth? The answer, well, it's pretty simple. Samsung has been really struggling in the Chinese market. In fact, a recent report by Strategy Analytics pins Samsung's market share in the Chinese smartphone arena to be below 1%. Now, while Samsung has been losing a market share on a global scale, the situation in China is worse than anywhere else. This is especially because of Chinese brands like Xiaomi, Huawei, Oppo, and Vivo pricing their phones very aggressively and taking large chunks out of Samsung's market share. 
This is apparent especially in this mid-range segment where Chinese consumers have sharply moved away from overpriced Samsung phones, instead preferring the other local alternatives. Now, in a last-ditch attempt to make a comeback, Samsung has decided to partner with ODMs like Wing Tech for their mid-range segment. This means in China, Samsung can source their phones and the parts locally, not spend as much on R&D. The ODM also has volume, right? Because they're not just building phones for Samsung. They are sourcing, if it's a 660, they're buying. They're buying it for a multitude of phones. So there's just a lot more uh, volume that they're doing so they can keep the prices competitive. The result, as you can see, is the Galaxy A success. It isn't gonna blow your minds with insane specs or anything, but it is quite solid. The Samsung brand name is there and it's a very competitive price tag. In China, the A6S is being sold for 17.99 yuan. That converts to about 19,000 rupees for the 64 gig variant. Now think about it, 19,000 for a Samsung phone with a Snapdragon 660. Not bad, right? You'd still, I mean, it would push people who are probably buying a Redmi Note 5 Pro or something to pay a little bit extra and buy a Samsung with 660. In general, what do we find from Samsung in the 19K segment? Exynos 7870. <laughs> We've seen that so many times. In, in China, it's not like India. Samsung has fallen back a lot and a lot of people have gone past Samsung. So there is still some tough competition. Like for example, the Mi 8 SC, which comes with the Snapdragon 710, much more powerful. And that's coming in around that price segment. It's got a better looking build and finish. However, for Samsung, this might be their last throw of the dice as we have rumors circulating that Samsung is looking to close one of their manufacturing plants in China in order to re reduce losses in the region. Hopefully for them, their marketing cloud and brand recognition, the brand image, the brand name, uh, even with an ODM, it helps them uh, and they might end up making a recovery. Uh, but that, all that said, this is a move that Samsung is basically making because they've been forced to make it. So what do you feel about Samsung using an ODM here? Would you buy an A6S if it launched in your market in India at around the 19,000 rupee mark? Uh, that would be what, 200, 250 uh, US dollars? Let me know in the comments below. I just found this to be a very interesting topic and I wanted to kind of explain how it worked, why Samsung is going with an ODM and how an ODM differs from an OEM and how the business models work. I kind of feel it's important for people to understand all this. Uh, it's not just the specs, it's not just the brand name that's important. All these things kind of play a part in the final pricing that gets given to us end consumers. So if you did find this inter video interesting, share it with friends and family, give it a thumbs up. If you still hated it for some reason, go ahead, vote it down. You know, it's your choice, but click either of those buttons, thumbs up, thumbs down, both are fine. And if you did like it a lot, go ahead, subscribe, turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. It is now time I bid you adieu. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.